thank you so much for joining with us on our Finding Peace with Carol Howe series. We're now entering into the traditional season of peace, and most folks could surely use more of it. We are so conditioned to the idea that circumstances and people have to be different before we can be peaceful. So we need to hear over and over that it's just the opposite. Circumstances and relationships will improve as inner peace is increased. And that turns out to be an entirely ever-present individual choice. So, how is inner peace to be accomplished if I don't try to control and manipulate life so that it provides what I think I want to be happy and safe and thus peaceful? Well, the first step is to recognize that if we're honest, when we just step away from our distractions for even a short little while, that we feel some disturbance or possibly numbness. Maybe we don't feel anything at all. So for starters, there are many things to look at, but for starters, let's take a look at holding in and holding back. Does this sound familiar? For instance, if I ask you to come on this program and sing, would you like that? If you're not a professional singer or actor, probably not. You would go, oh, I'm, no, 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 I'm going to, I'm holding back. I'm not going to do that. I can't sing. I'm not going to embarrass myself. People will laugh at me and so on and so forth. Now, listen, all of us to one degree or the other have learned from infancy to retract to hold in, to close down, and in all ways to withdraw from what we presume is a source of pain or fear. This is just a built-in survival technique common to all of us, and it's instinctive. But here's the problem. We grow to adulthood with those defensive holding-in patterns still in place and unexamined, like we just think this is how life is. So now, if we want to see if they really are necessary, or have they just become a saboteur of peace instead? Now, today's guest writes of his extreme and constant sense of holding in and holding back, and also his distress. My guess is he doesn't realize all this pronounced holding in is the key to his distress. He's just trying to be safe, but instead greatly compromising his experience. Unbeknownst to him, this holding back is increasing his guilt and his upset rather than alleviating it or protecting him in some way. So we're going to join together now to help him see clearly where reprogramming, seeing things differently, and being kind to himself will finally allow him to feel safe and valued and cared for, and his peace of mind can begin to return. So let's see what he has to say and see how he can be pointed in a real direction for finding peace. Don, thank you so much for sending in your email. (laughs) And it looks like you've got some really incredibly important things to discuss. And one of the things that I always want everybody to know is these discussions are not just for one of us because actually pretty much all issues, aside from the specific details, are really all about everybody. So everybody's got something that's similar to this going on. And another thing I like to really tell everybody in the beginning is that when any of us have difficulties or things aren't the way we would like them or so on, we tend to think, well, there's something about me that needs to be fixed or improved. (laughs) And I always say, nope, you don't need to be fixed or improved because there's no way you can be less than the perfection with which you were created. So, of course, then one might ask, well, then why am I talking to you if I don't need to be fixed or improved? And it's because we (laughs) sure do believe things that need to be Mm -hmm. fixed and improved. In other words, because since our outer life, all of the circumstances that are going on are 
um, are related intimately and seamlessly with what's going on in our inner life, then mm. we absolutely need to know what those are. So does that make sense to just to begin with? Yes, absolutely. Okie dokie. So one of the things that you um, mentioned in your email, and I think this is just hugely important, is that you you often feel racked with a certain kind of guilt or a certain amount of guilt or something like that, and that therefore you're aware of a great holding back. So I would love it if you would tell me a couple of things. First of all, what does holding back look like to you? Like what is the behavior or what are the processes that you recognize as holding back? Well, I'd have to say that most prominent among them, and this is this has struck me down, so to speak, held me in the chair, so to speak, for my entire life. Every, I think ever since I was a baby. Okay. And there's, there's a holding back in a physical way, um, not letting myself, you know, be fully, fully me. Yes. And just, 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 I mean, it's affected throwing a ball when I was eight years old. And, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's, 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 uh, it's very sad <laughs> to tell you the truth. You're, it's you're scary. right. You're, you're right. In other words, so you're aware of absolutely at a physical level, the tightness of muscles, the shortness mm -hmm. of breathing, in other words, everything. And so the first yes. thing to know about that is you're right. It goes back to the time when you were a baby and that, and that same going back to when we were a baby and actually even before, which is what the biology folks can tell us now, is that we mm -hmm. begin to inherit our wounding at conception because we inherit yeah. DNA that's unhealed from our ancestral lines. And so you might say, we bring on a certain quotient of fear, guilt, unresolved stuff when we show up. So there's not a person in the world who does not have this inner work that needs to be done and some ancient wounding that needs to be faced. Like nobody comes in with a clean slate, so to speak. We all come I in. That, I, know, I know that should be covering, but that, that actually sets up more fear in me because I feel that I'm not going to um, you know, that is, that is something that, that maybe can't be overcome. You know what I'm saying? No, but that I know what you're saying. And the whole point of our talk, the whole point of any spiritual practice is to say that absolutely it can be overcome and must be overcome and really quite easily overcome once you know what it's all about, because what has happened, not only in in your prenatal time, but afterwards, whatever your growing up circumstances were, you realize that, that all young animals, and that of course includes us, instinctively withdraw from or recoil from what's painful, and that's painful emotionally, painful physically, like however pain mm. is registered in tiny little creatures, and go toward what feels better. And so in those first early six or seven years, that protection from emotional pain is when that's structured into the body. In other words, that's when those physical muscular holding patterns began. And it's not like you sat around and said, gee whiz, I think it's now time to tighten my muscles. <laughs> in other words, this was all totally <laughs> automatic. And then yeah. in, our, in our middle years, we develop emotional defenses against emotional wounding. And in our, say, f high school, college years, we develop intellectual defenses. And so unfortunately, everybody grows up to be, and this is just kind of to one extent or the other, but it happens with everybody. We get to be young adults and we are just as programmed and defended and held in at all sorts of levels as we can possibly be. So it's like we start off our young adulthood with 
handicaps. And when we don't well, that understand does have the potential that. of relieving some guilt because it, it's taken the, the onus off of me, you know, I'm blaming myself. Uh, for for whatever for 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 that for all these years. Absolutely, I I would love it if you would go. What you mean? Every one of us have this very same process to one degree or the other because nobody has perfect parents. Nobody had perfect healed ancestral DNA. <laughs> it's like nobody. Mm-hmm. I mean, and even we could pretend like you had really fabulous parents which nobody has. I mean, I'm a parent. I didn't have fabulous parents. I wasn't a fabulous parent. I was a good parent, but I certainly made my mistakes like everybody else. But even Mm -hmm. if that were so, then you still got the neighbors, the people you meet, the educational systems, the religious traditions, all the cultural things that have a lot of false notions built into it. So everybody has... Yes, everybody has got their own quotient of guilt. And Mm -hmm. the message of any what I refer to as valid spiritual practice is the message is, well, we sure have all made a lot of mistakes because how could we not? When we were, when we really literally have neural networks wired in our brains with unfortunate information about we might not be deserving, we might not be worthy, we might not measure up, uh, we might not please people, and so on and so forth. And everybody's got some little portfolio of all of those notions about not oh, being okay. Wow. That, that like dispenses with so many ideas that I've developed from, yeah. so, from, from so far back. That's, a, <laughs> that's amazing. And here's the thing, this is where neuroplasticity is so helpful because the brain is very easily rewired. It's not like it goes, Mm. no, this was wired in a long time ago and I'm not changing. It's like the brain doesn't care. I mean, you just put in new information and it rewires exactly like if you've got a computer that's malfunctioning, most people don't sit around and say, darn, my computer doesn't work. Oh, well, I guess there's not anything I can do about it. I mean, nobody would sit still for that. You'd get yourself right to a computer store, you download updates, you do whatever. And this is not the computer hardware, at least in my example, because it's not nearly so often the actual hardware. It's the software that is in error and therefore it's giving you output on your computer that's not what you're looking for. You know, I would so work what for you're IBM. saying is it's as easy as, I hope, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. No. It, you, it, you, you're making it sound like it's as easy as hitting the delete button. <laughs> well, in many ways it is. When we realize, uh-huh. like for instance, what is, give me an example, for instance, of one thing, one specific of those various things I said we tend to beat ourselves up about, Give me one that comes to mind, something that you've just always believed about yourself, except you don't think it's a belief, you think it's the truth. You think, well, I just really am this way. Does anything come to mind? Well, what comes to mind is, 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 I guess it's a general one, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not good enough. There you go. Well, you know what? I've talked to thousands of people, and you'd just be surprised at the number of people who say, well, one of the things I really am sure of is that I'm not good enough. <laughs> so not good mm-hmm. enough is like it infects us in the water supply or something because it's so commonplace. And so you think, wow. you see, you've never questioned that. You've thought, okay, I'm not good enough in at least some areas of life. So I guess I'm going to have to just work out workarounds about this truth. We'll put that in quotes, this truth about me. One of them is defending and holding back as if so nobody can ever see you. Because if maybe if nobody can ever see you, they won't know that I'm not good enough. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, that's the way I cover it up in myself, too. Yeah. In other words, you've not only hidden from others, you've hidden from yourself. And this is all based on nothing. 
It's not a truth. It's a learned idea when the brain was still essentially in many ways a non-functioning brain. The frontal lobe hadn't developed yet. So self-talk mm. hadn't developed yet when so much of this was built in. And so you there, there was no way when you were two or three years old you could say, you know what, all this stuff I've learned is really crazy. I'm just marvelous. <laughs> you know, you can't do that when you're three. But the problem, Don, is that we grow up and we become physically adult, but we're still carrying these old instinctively produced notions about ourselves from when we were infants and toddlers and very, very young children. And it's never occurred to us to challenge them or question them. I mean, most people don't suddenly one day say, what if this isn't the truth that I'm not good enough? What if I'm just fabulous? Most people don't well, do that. Well, you're questioning it in a way where it really connects. Um, well, good. And, and what, I, what I just got out of that is that and this, you know, this is an incredible process, Carol. What I, what I got out of it is that like, we're all in it together, Democrats, Republicans, yes. uh, Christians, uh, Muslims. We're all in yes. it together. And we all have the exact same DNA and stuff going on. It's, that is yes. so... That is that is so uh, wonderful to know that you know. Well, bless like, your wow. heart, bless your heart. I'm delighted, and because here's the next great thing, is just like your computer can have a different programming logic put in it, and and the mm -hmm. computer doesn't care. It will execute any program that that you put in there. A million yeah. years ago, I was a systems engineer with IBM. I've done a great deal of programming and debugging of programs that didn't work. And computers mm -hmm. and people are essentially the same. <laughs> it's like you just find yeah. where the logic is not correct. But you wouldn't dream of calling a computer guilty because somewhere a programmer made some logic errors. You would go, Oh, well, okay, there's some logic errors. I'll fix them. End of story. So if we could approach this with the same certainty, that just like if, uh, to, to use my computer example, if a program's logic is giving you output that you don't like, it's not doing anything to the hardware. It's just that the result you're getting is not what you're looking for. But the computer itself mm -hmm. is just fine. And you yourself, as you were created, are way more than just fine. Everything promises us that you are as perfect and eternal and beloved as you were in were and are in your ever-present newly being created. And your little ego mind that makes up all this stuff does not have any power to change those built-in truths about you. You can not know about them, but you can't change them and you can't make them go away. And you are as clear and as blessed you were adored into existence and nothing will ever change that. Not your veil of, we'll just say, ignorance. I'm not talking about you being ignorant because you don't know stuff. I'm talking about the ignorance of what we've done to ourselves in our thinking, not in our reality. So that's a big mouthful. What do you think about that? Well, the fear uh, blanks a little bit out of that, uh, blank some of that out as you were talking because, you know, I got kind of open and loving and I had some incredible uh, incredible sense of I guess insight and 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 you know compassion but then the fear came in and my my question I think that came from that is but why won't I accept this you know what what's what what what's bringing it um why, why why won't I go further you know why won't I really believe this fully and completely instead of just have a, an occasional uh, insight. Well, you, you know, know th th I do. And so let's just look at that question. In other words, what do you think is going to happen to you if you start mm. to claim that you're mm. 
that that you're let's not let's not start with eternal and all that that's too hard to wrap your head around let's just start with talented and deserving and um and and a lovely person like what what do you think will happen to you if you start to think about yourself that way because that's what's required to get the rewiring done you have to actually replace we this is not competing programming this is replacing programming whereas before you've thought that you were guilt-ridden and undeserving and you needed to hide what if you just sit in your house where nobody bothers you and nobody can hear and you out loud you say you know what I really do have a wonderful right to be here. So we're start see we're starting small. We're not starting with, you know, you're perfect. We're start which is true. But that's what scares me to death. It's like um um it it's part of me is gonna die. And there's, there's, there's definitely no question about it. My misery is my company. <laughs> You know, yes. it's like, well, I yes. don't want to let go of it because that's my friend, you know? Exactly. We've the, the ego has got us so undermined, and it presents itself as your savior, so to speak. It's kind of like the ego mind is really a convenient word to refer to all of those defenses. And so you think, you've got to be kidding you just expect me to walk around in the world undefended? I don't know what's going to happen, you know, and so on and so forth. And it sometimes it does feel like something is dying and mm -hmm. something is. But the thing that's dying are really all the defenses. It's all of these notions that aren't true. And sooner or later, they do have to go. I've been through that, which is why I'm in a position to do this, because I always tell anybody, whether they're people in classes or private counseling or whatever, I don't ever tell anybody or instruct anybody in anything I haven't personally been through myself, because I think that would be disingenuous to do. So I understand uh -huh. about fear and terror. I also know that it's completely unfounded. You know, so that I can promise you. But like right now, since we only can experience whatever is happening right now, tell me, okay, what's happening in your body right now? As we discuss these really important ideas about how you get to be free because you are actually a loving presence. So, I don't know if I can put it in this, uh, in, uh, put it in words where anybody else will understand it. Isn't that interesting? I think I'm the only one in the whole world that's experiencing this. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it, it's actually a holding in in my body, and it's centered. I, I guess you know the whole tra chakra thing, where it's in the basic survival. Isn't that the lowest chakra, basic yeah, survival? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and right. uh, what is it? An in, infantile, even, and and, yeah. uh, and 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 all that. And it's like the whole, the whole part. It's a little embarrassing and personal, but it, it's like the whole part of that body is just holding, right. holding on, you know, and not 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 wanting to let go. And I, uh, this may sound crazy to some people, but I I really think that that had to do with. Uh, um, disapproval with expressions of my mother as I was a baby and, and sure. toilet training and improper, um, or, you know, I, uh, uh, I guess I call it improper tra toilet, toilet yes. training yes. And, 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 and stuff where that was one of the first areas where I think I learned dis disapproval. Exactly. Um, like I, you I were really some do. sort of a dirty, awful person. In other words, there was something really bad about you. Well, you see, yeah. I hope you go back to what you said earlier, is that everybody is in some variation of the same boat. So one of the things I want you to do now, as you mm. just notice, is if that's the place where you notice holding is in that lower part of your body it's like mm -hmm. what since that's the thing you mentioned that's what we'll work with so what i want you to do now is simply put your attention there 
You're not going to fix anything. You're not figuring out anything. Your intellect is not involved in this process at all. But what I want you to do is focus with the most beautiful, soft kindness directed to that part of your body, the whole lower torso part of your body. In other words, what you're finally doing is you're going to simply pay attention to it in a very sweet and kind way. This isn't some kind of a magic trick and I don't want you to think about anything. What I want you to do is just feel, you might say, your goodwill and your blessing and your kindness and and as, as open, all those words that mean openness on your part, what you're gonna do is simply notice that part of your body in a kind way and just pay attention to it kindly. That's the word that keeps coming to me. It needs to be treated and regarded and paid attention to with a very soft kindness. So are you doing that now? Well, uh, yes, I, I, I am, but to get past it, I I, threw, I don't think I'm throwing up obstacles. I, I think, but to get past it, I have to recognize that I sort of killed that baby inside me. Well, well, we that's a, that's something we will do in a moment. But this oh. is strictly so. You're you're right. We need to address baby Don. I'm giving it some understanding and compassion. And stuff. What I what <laughs> I want you to do now is simply you are going to be a kind adult. Okay. You, you get to do what didn't happen earlier, but it's equally as effective if you do it now. It's not like being appropriately treated was a little window of opportunity that closed a long time ago. It's open forever and always, and right now in this moment, we have to take advantage of that. So. Nothing keeps mm -hmm. you. I can tell you are a smart guy and you've been thinking about these things for a long time. You've just been missing some crucial pieces that make it all make sense. So right mm -hmm. now, you have the opportunity to regard, again, I just want you to focus on the physical part, not any of the psychological part or anything, but just, mm -hmm. just pay attention to this part of your body with kindness. That's the only thing that I'm asking you to do. Do not think. This is not a thinking intellectual exercise. And just decide, I get to treat myself kindly because I say so. And just breathe very deeply as you do this because we tend to shorten the breath. The reason we do that is shortening the breath cuts off pain. So what we want to do right now is not try to hide anything or minimize anything. We're going to address it directly by approaching it and all the defensiveness that's built in simply with oh, open-hearted open kindness. I was putting the card before the heart. Yes, you were. We all tend to do that, especially those of us <laughs> who are somewhat intelligent. <laughs> So just so just just regard yourself, regard it kindly. Yeah. Okay, it's as I, if I, you're I got it. you're just turning a flashlight. In other words, you could if you were in a dark mm -hmm. room, you can aim that flashlight any place you want. Right now you're aiming this kind of flashlight of kindness with no agenda. No nothing except kindness yeah, to this area. I'm kind of purifying those cells, clearing out all those cells in, in my body. You just yeah, you don't you're not trying to make anything happen. You're just deciding I right. will treat yeah. this part of my body with kindness. Okay. Just allow it. Allow it, yes, allow it, because your life has been one great big long resisting struggle. So now we're gonna take some baby steps and going back the other way and going I'm going to accept everything about this with kindness. Mm -hmm. And so as you just do that, you know, you just focus your attention, it's like, I'm going to be 
kind. I am being kind, not I'm going to be, because it needs to be present tense. I am mm -hmm. being kind to myself now. I now. am kind to myself. Yeah, and, and, and do that. Feel from your own very heart. Feel a kind of warmth and kindness. Like, reach out from your opening heart to that part of your body. And just tell me what happens whenever you're ready to do that. Well, I, I'm not a real religious person. I consider myself spiritual, but what I had was a sense of a picture I just saw recently of Christ with a, a heart. Um, and I, I saw that heart, that heart opening. Bless that you. hard work. Yeah, and it going to that part of the body. Um, so that was my experience, you know. <laughs> Marvelous. Further than that. <laughs> well, I should say. Well, let me ask. Let me ask you an, a really important question. Now is, tell me how you feel right now. Well, I feel Just, uh, I feel definitely better. There's certainly still some some holding back, but there is some re reduction, some release of that okay. energy uh, in that lower, in that lower part of the body. And I and I feel it'll grow. That's the it most will. beautiful thing. That little that little it was almost like a I don't like to use the word vision, you know, those powerful words. Yeah. But that 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 visual illustration that I just had, uh, I feel it's gonna stay with me long after this phone conversation. I I, I really do. I think it's a part of uh, it's gonna be a part of me now. Absolutely. Well, not only that, but things are now going to get better and better because now mm. this is always my favorite part. I love to do this. I do this all the time with people and I never cease to be delighted. Okay. Now it's been, you know, we started to visit about a half an hour ago. Okay. So would it be fair to well, say... I'm sorry, it, I didn't hear what you said about a half an hour ago. I said we, I, what I'm going to say is that we've been talking for about a half an hour. Oh, so, okay. but so when we started to visit a half an hour ago, and you noticed how you felt then, and you notice how you feel now, is there a mm -hmm. difference? A difference? You would agree? Yeah, I, I think I'm more grounded. Marvelous. In in other words, even if it's only a small difference. Now here's the exciting part. This makes me want to like jump up and down because I think it's so exciting is in this 30 minute period, you have already started to rewire your brain. Remember mm. when I said it, rewiring your brain is easy? I mean, because it's a matter of deciding, mm -hmm. you know what? Why don't I just start to think about myself this way? instead of this way, and your brain is just as happy as it can be to start to wire together in a different way. And so you you have just proven my point to yourself, which is it doesn't matter if you've spent however many years you've been alive believing things that aren't true and feeling awful as a result because the thoughts dictate our emotional state as yeah, well as the and condition you know, Carol, of the body. It's not, it, it's not you, you, you use the, the right term, obviously, but the rewiring, it's not a uh, hitting the delete button. It's no. your term, rewiring. It's a transmutation of yes. that wiring. It's a movement of that wiring. The wiring, the structure, kind of like you said also earlier, mm -hmm. is still there. Uh, but it's just being transmuted. Absolutely. In other words, it's just being rearranged, kind of like when you are literally mm -hmm. doing um, the rewiring mm. of, of computers. It's like you're using all of the same internal uh, mechanisms of, of, the, of the computer, but you're just associating parts of the computer differently based on the instructions that the programs give it. Does that make sense? It's, in, Another... it's interesting, yeah, yeah, it does. It's interesting because I have a vision of my mother's, uh, uh, basically her first job when she was very, very young, about the only job she had in, in her life because she was a, 
housewife with four kids and a military World War II military wife and all that, but she was a switchboard operator. You know the old fashioned kind that sat there yes. with the headphones on and pushed the, the yes. plugs quarter sure plug in all these different holes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Well, that's exactly. So you've got the same wires, you've got the same switchboard, but when mm. you connect those wires differently, a different connection is happening. It's like Susie is talking to grandma rather than the next door neighbor mm -hmm. is talking to uh, the water department. Well, In grandma, other words, I'm going straight to God. <laughs> yeah. So, so the point is, is that you're using the same machinery but you're telling it, you're wiring it differently. But see, the exciting part mm -hmm. is notice how fast it happened. And it's like, you think, you mean I can change my mind about stuff and I can feel substantively different in a half an hour? Yes. Mm -hmm. And imagine if from now on you go, okay, I think I need to make a list about all of these things that I feel guilty about and how awful I think I am. And, you know, unfortunately, most of us have quite a long list. And if you can't think of them, the people you don't like will remind you what they are. And mm. in any event, you think this is nothing but unfortunate, inaccurate programming. What if it's really true that I have a gift to give that is like no other? that I am my own unique aspect of oneness and wholeness and nobody can ever express life like I can and boy, I need to get on with it. In other words, nothing keeps us from deciding to think about ourselves that way and that's what growing up is about. That's what's becoming spiritually mature is about. Like Socrates says, the unexamined life is not worth living. Because what do we do? We get programmed when we're infants and small children, and then we grow up and we're physically adult, but we're still being driven by infantile, incorrect, because there was no other way for it to be, but incorrect when you were little, programming. And so this never means there's anything the matter with it. It means we've made mistakes because if you believe you're no good and that you don't have anything to offer, you naturally are going to make some very unfortunate decisions based on that belief, thinking that's really true. In other words, you will, you will undermine yourself. But those mistakes, you look at them and go, oh, look what I used to think. Well, I don't have to do that anymore. In mm. other words, but, but that's not to beat yourself up over. It's to say, who knew? I didn't know until now. Now, this is what a Course in Miracles is for. When it's practiced, what it does is drive up so much of this programming that has been shoved way down into the bottom of the unconsciousness because that's what we do with pain and pain-inducing uh, experiences. We just make them disappear into the unconscious. And what... Well. What is, so, what is so is that these things can't be addressed and our minds changed about them until we know about them. So A Course in Miracles will drive things up into awareness where then you can begin to change your mind. That's what it's for. It is a, a Course in Miracles is a spiritual technology for rewiring your brain. And it does a masterful job when you allow it to do its work. What do you think about that? Well, you know, backing up a little bit, the, the, it's interesting that you use the term growing up and stuff because you you must know that that's also an ad admonishment and often shouted in anger by parents or older siblings, grow up, you know. And, mm -hmm. and But what you're doing is you are using that phrase, but what you're doing is sort of like the, the, what the Course does with the, with the misinterpretations in the Bible. It yeah. straightens them out and shows you a different way to look at those very same, uh, not necessarily the very, very same words, but the, uh, the getting to the real meaning of it or a positive meaning uh, Absolutely. Of, of it. Absolutely. Yeah. You're exactly right. So this is mm -hmm. not grow up as an insult saying <laughs> you're acting like a big baby. This is like, this is much kinder. This is like, the Course is like a presence. 
at least to me it is. And it takes you by the hand and says, I know all of this stuff you believe. I know it's not true. I know that you know it's not, you don't know that it's not true yet. But anyway, because I can see the big picture. This is like the course talking. <laughs> this is the cartoon version of the course talking. It's like, I see the big picture, which you don't yet see. So take my hand and I'm going to lead you through looking at the things you believe that are blocking all of the good that is your birthright. Because you may remember that in the introduction to the text, it says this course is not about teaching the meaning of love because that's what beyond can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. And that's what these very holding patterns and early things that are wired into the brain are. They are blocks. And so you can't avoid looking at the blocks because that's the only way you can go, oh my gosh, look what I learned when I was two. That is so not true. I'm going to be so good to myself, which brings me back now to something you said earlier about baby Don needs to be taken care of properly. And one of the things that as you are discovering many of these things that you believe that aren't true, it's like it's very helpful to just sit down in a chair. A rocking chair would be good if you have one. If you don't, you can pretend like you're in one and pick up little three-year-old Don because little three-year-old Don is still alive in your psyche, so to speak. Pick him up, <laughs> put him over your shoulder and rock him and put his little head on your shoulder and tell him, finally, now things are going to be good. Finally, well, now, I'm taking the, care of you. In the early days, instead of doing that, I basically, and many people did as well, especially in the early days of the course, um, would, would uh, oh, it's all an illusion, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I know. But where I come from now is that you have to find your humanity before you can find your compassion. And you have to recognize and accept your humanity, your limitations, the condition, the DNA that you're speaking of earlier b before you can move forward. So I, I've been in touch with that for quite a while. And, and certainly at times I'm in, inspired and I do know these things that, that you're saying I don't know yet, mm -hmm. but I haven't accepted them fully and and completely uh, uh i definitely haven't accepted them fully and completely into my everyday um uh uh 100 percent you know 100 percent of the time i just get i just allow glimpses of it and and it's very rewarding when, when you do when you smile at someone a stranger yes. especially one that especially one that may be ignored or may may have physical problems or be ill or or some other abnormality uh, it, there's so much love that you can see from that person that comes back to reward you uh when you when you're able to do that out in the social setting you know what i'm saying i i sure do and here's let me kind of reframe this for you a little bit differently it's when you decide okay. <laughs> i think i'm going to be i think i'm going to be open-hearted and i'm going to practice because as you say you you have been practicing for decades a very severe holding in and holding back. And so right. now I'm going to start going the other way. And when you say, so when I kind of extend my kindness and my goodwill and my good wishes and so on out, so to speak, it comes back. It's not so much that it, it comes back. It ne never leaves you, but it grows in your awareness so that the more you offer that sweet goodwill that you offer and it doesn't even matter what it is it can be a fire hydrant you know it's like we're t we tend to think about offering our blessings to people well you could offer your blessings to anything because that sense of being blessed will grow in you because we always experience what we offer what we're offering it to doesn't matter it could be the carpet under your feet 
because it's not returning back from something. It appears that way in the, in the three-dimensional world, but it's actually that it's never left your mind. Love can never leave your mind. No, and the more you offer it, the stronger your awareness of it comes. It's already huge and beautiful and strong, but when you hold in and hold back, you don't even know it's there. So the more you offer it, indiscriminately everywhere you go, the more and more and more awareness you have of your own ever present birthright that can never leave you. It's the hallmark of your being is being loving and beloved and lovable, period. That's never been altered by all of that confusion that started a long time ago. So what do you think about that? Hmm. I just see flowers growing, daisies popping up, roses, Perfect. carnations. They just pop up all over everywhere. Animals Perfect. hanging out in a circle in the backyard. Different animals talking to each other. You know, dogs Perfect. and horses and ra ra rabbits and coyotes and all of them just sitting around talking to each other and and uh and the re and several of us humans in there too <laughs> right well you've got your own <laughs> private zoo well i want to touch on one last thing before we bring our time to closure and that is when because you mentioned in part of your email about having some financial difficulties and uh, around mm -hmm. your car potentially here's what yeah when you hold back and close down to try to protect yourself from the alleged attack that's going to come when somebody sees how terrible you are, in other words, that's why we hold back, because we think, oh dear, people are going to see something awful, or I will see something awful. But here's the problem. Holding back is holding back, and being closed is being closed. So when you're closed, so that you don't deal with how you're actually feeling and, and the upset that you're generating for yourself, you're also closing off your opportunity, your prosperity, all of the things that will bring good into your life. So you think, well, darn, well, what I had in mind was that I was gonna close down so that I could protect myself and keep the bad stuff out, but I wanna be mm -hmm. open to the good stuff. Well, there's just no such thing as that. You're either open or you're closed. So until yeah. this defensiveness begins little by little to fade away because you realize I don't need defenses because I'm not endangered. And I'm not endangered because I say I'm not endangered. It's not like somebody else is going to approach you and say, by the way, Don, you're not endangered. I, I will be your surrogate self and tell you, I'll pretend like I'm you at the moment saying, you, there's nothing to defend because um, the course will tell you. It's like defenses do what they defend against. Or if you defend yourself, you will feel attack because all of your focus is on what's going to go wrong. So you think, well, that I don't want to do. So decide, I'm going to practice little by little by little. And partly it's that offering your goodwill just as you walk down the street or even as you sit in your house. And I'm also going to just practice being open so that openness becomes a goal. I'm going to be open to when I walk in this grocery store, I'm going to just presume all is well. <laughs> in other words, anything you can do that will focus on that and notice not only how much better you feel, but how suddenly life seems to have a different quality to it. Would you be willing to try that out? Well, I, I actually find it doesn't work for me if I try to like force myself or make myself be a certain way. What works for me, and I do that often, well, and, I, and now, yes, I will do it more, but what works for me is when I just open to, since I am, of course, a miracle student, open to uh, uh, the Holy Spirit and say, let, you know, and, and let him guide the way, let him hurt, Perfect. Uh, guide, 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 guide my way, because I can't, I can't, I, I don't feel that I can do it myself without help, you know, because we're all in the world. 
Yeah. Perfect. That, no, that, I'm that not talking. About... I hate to tell myself to behave. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, no, but no, I, no, but no, I no, what no. You're saying too. I, I don't do want you to... to change my behavior. Yes, and see, I'm not talking about changing your behavior. Behavior, beha yeah. change in behavior automatically comes with a change of mind. What I'm saying is, to feel open, that's not at all forcing yourself on anybody or into any situation. I'm saying right. the where the general attitude of resistance slowly gets yeah. traded in for the general attitude of openness and accepting. Because that's a yeah, practice and, that we have yeah, to develop. Yeah, and I see how that even applies. I certainly was holding it off. Uh, I can see how that applies to, like, quote, bad thing regarding the, the cost of my car repair that I don't even know yet. It could be right. nothing, you know? Uh, right. And I, you're right. I was holding that back exactly like I hold back negative aspects of myself or things I don't want to think about or you know, that right. I fear, and, and I didn't realize, I certainly didn't realize that was, that was the exact same thing. Um, it is exactly the exact so. same. Okay, so now, I hope that you feel like when we um, s complete our talk, that you can go take yourself, maybe make some notes or whatever it is that will help you um, remember some of these things. But the main thing is, is that you can see that you feel differently now than you did a while back. And, yeah. and, and, and with that, that's all the proof that you need that changing your mind can happen quickly and you have the capacity with help. Now, I do the same thing. I ask, you know, like I want to be guided. I'm I'm very mm -hmm. clear that I need to hear guidance and I'm I'm good at it. I've been doing this for a long time, so it's pretty easy for me to hear what guidance is. And absolutely, I'm I don't want to be running around letting my ego mind run amok, which is what it Well, do. that is the true you. Opening up to guidance is the true you. So absolutely. Uh, can you get any other good advice? <laughs> Abs absolutely. Absolutely. So write yourself some notes, and maybe mm -hmm. one of these days you can send me an email, maybe in two or three weeks, and just let me know how things are working out. Is Will it possible that? to get a copy of, the re of this recording, or is this going to be a podcast or something? Um. It's a teleclass, and yes, I can talk to you about that later. All right? Okay. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for your time. I'm so glad that you wrote in and that we've had a chance to visit, and I'll look forward to getting an email from you here one of these days soon and telling me what's going on. Okay. okay. Thanks so much, Carol. That's, that's an incredible, uh, you have an incredible way of uh, putting things into uh, a truer perspective. Well, thank you very, very much, and many blessings to you. Okay, well, thank dear. you, and, and return the favor. Okay, okay. dear. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, as always, such a lovely visit. And it's so important that Don has acknowledged that he thinks he's the only one who has ever felt guilty. <laughs> we all do, a hundred percent of us, to one extent or the other, and it must be released before we can possibly hope to be peaceful. Because, now listen carefully, assuming we are guilty always brings what feels like punishment with it. And we've all certainly made mistakes, some huge ones and, and many, many of them, but those call for correction and not punishment, which 100% of the time backfires. Happily, did you notice that he realized that we're like computers and we can have this guilt replaced by better programming. Same hardware, different software. Same brain, different ideas about ourselves. And with different ideas, a different outcome, a more settled, more peaceful, more loving outcome. Now, if you would like to find out a bit more about how your programming could be traded in for ideas that are more user-friendly and a little less pain-producing, send your challenge to FindingPeace at carolhow.com and we'll take a close look. So thank you. Remember, you deserve only the best despite what you might currently believe. And we hope you'll return next week 
for another dose of what's right about you. Goodbye for now. Have a great